Knowles News. It's Knowles News. How are you doing, fella? Well, Noel, how are you? Flat out. Are you? I'm doing bales, yeah. Oh, God. Round bales or square bales? More oh, round, by Round. A few square ones just for not hobby. <laughs> just just for a bit of hardship. Take the bad look off the place. <laughs> Young fella came in then and said he had hay fever. Did or as I call it, laziness. <laughs> <laughs> now, was, he, was he bad with the, the, the... With the laziness, yeah. He was struck down. <laughs> wicked affliction to laziness, young fella. Um... <laughs> I have news for you now. News story number one. A new study says you will live longer if you become an optimist. Optimists. Dirty bastards. <laughs> Are they the crowd who don't wash themselves? <laughs> and, and don't eat meat? <laughs> I don't think... What are they even called? Which of them are optimists? Optimists are, you know, very positive people and they look on the, the bright side. Half, glass is half full kind of people. Like they, they think tomorrow will be great. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I've seen tomorrow. It's shite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yesterday's nothing to go by, it is. <laughs> this study said positive people, and I quote, are more likely to live past 85. Well, up our road is Nancy Nagel, 101. <laughs> Most miserable <laughs> tramp of a woman. No, no, you can't say Oh, she should have been dead years ago. <laughs> She's too miserable to die. <laughs> She, she hated Father Dwyer so much she refused to die while he was the parish priest <laughs> for fear he'd be saying her mass. That, that's a, that is a fact. She hated that man. I, he, now he's gone. Uh, she's going to need someone else to hate. I don't know. Keep her going. Do you know them nuns who live like in an enclosed nunnery? <laughs> <laughs> nunnery. Okay. An enclosed order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know they just stay at home praying all day. And they reckon they're doing their own little bit for the world by praying. Yeah. Well, I reckon Nancy Nagel just sits at home hating everyone. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever meet her? No. Oh, she'd hate you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? That, that's why they keep Derek Mooney on the telly. What? So all people have someone to hate. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing a service. This fella's at home lipping up after said he's hating him. Get him off. Get him off. Finally, without him to be people to be deaths on <sighs> on scale. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> um without him, I suppose you could always hate Bono. B- Bono. Bono. <laughs> but I don't it's more of a dislike than a hatred, really. It's like when you're at mass and you get stuck beside Dash O'Donnell and the smell of <laughs> cabbage off that man. Why does he always smell of cabbage? You know the, the Dash. Dash. <laughs> you know Dash. I know. He's always running around. Cabbage smelling bastard. <laughs> so this study by the University of Medicine in Boston, America, they surveyed 70,000 women. But none of them, none of these 70,000 women were hard-knobbed Irish grannies. They were all Americans, right? And over the years, they, assess, they assessed their levels of optimism as well as their overall health, exercise, diet, are they smoking fags, are they drinking, the whole lot. And they reckon it's all connected. That people who are optimistic live 15% longer and are better able to cope with emotional stress. <laughs> I'm getting stressed just reading this. <laughs> you struggle with that one. Huh? Um, and they said, Ima- and I quote, imagining a future where everything has turned out well, can lead to increased optimism. Wow, I am definitely sending my grandchildren to the Boston University of Medicine, (laughs) if this is the tripe they're coming out with. The University of Bristol, more pricks, they said, stress impacts the immune system. Now, I never had one of them. but I'm I'm, I'm sure you did. I meant to get one. (laughs) Where are we going to get one? An immune system. Yeah. Um, Morrison had having below on the <laughs> Don't deny it. Who sounds you out? But um, they reckon if you have, uh, if you're optimistic, you can fight off infection better because you're not stressed. Mm. That's what they say. And if you want to de-stress, as the saying goes, fight fire with fire. 
So when any badness comes at me, I kill it with my own badness. <laughs> Put in. <laughs> if you get sick, I'd have a small bottle of Brennan's protein, and that would kill any stress in your life. Okay. <laughs> like, um, you simply give a glass to the person who is stressing you out. <laughs> they drink it and fall down, and the stress is gone. <laughs> and Geraldine, remember I was telling you Geraldine had a new boyfriend? Yeah. Well, he was over, and he would not stop talking. <laughs> and I says to you, hey, Scutter Pants. <laughs> You'll have a drink. Well, this marmy shite hawk, he was unconscious in one minute after having a big glass of Brennan's poteen. That's terrible. Oh, Carmel said to me, Noel, you're going to have to do CPR. And I said, I don't have to do any such thing on this man. And she said, Noel, if you don't give this man the kiss of life, he is going to die. So we had a lovely funeral. <laughs> He didn't die, did he? He did, yeah. It was good stuff. It's you're, good, it's good, it's good putty. You're, you're not too upset. No, he was only a prick. <laughs> Geraldine is now on the lookout for a man with road frontage. Surely one of your listeners okay. will step up to bat. It's not a bit soon. Not for me. <laughs> and it just goes to show, enjoy life. <laughs> while you have it. Now... New story number two. If I was to say to you, clean cities, Ikea, and ABBA, you would say, forget about the first two. <laughs> Give me the blonde one from ABBA. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Um, do you know where they're from? Sweden. Yes. Yes. Do you know who else is from Sweden? Who? The Vikings. Oh. Pricks. Came over here beating up our priests. <laughs> That, that's why the priests learn to defend themselves. I tell you God, by the time by, by the time I went to school, the Christian brothers were like the Avengers. <laughs> Baiting lads. And there were no sign of the Vikings in 1960 in Ireland when the brother Fagan, the man who was armed with a bottle of powers, a ruler and a Ford Cartina. <laughs> I'd bait any Viking. Tell you, where, where were the Vikings when I was in school? We could have done with them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks. Cowards, laddie. Vikings, if you're listening. <laughs> oh, came over here, baiting our priests. <laughs> uh, the fact, mate, right? the Vikings, they snuck over, shot over across the water, baiting lads. For Sweden now, right? I'm telling you, Vikings. No, Superman wouldn't keep into priests we had. Kryptonite, kryptoshite. <laughs> Father Gallagher split him with a headbutt, no bother. <laughs> You may go in peace to be severely concussed. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know. Oh there is God. a school in Sweden. And they're in trouble. Not not for baiting lies now, but for something they call GDPR. Right? I thought that was like the mumps or the measles. or <laughs> You're going to get another shot of GDPR. But no. It means General Data Protection Regulation. If they have any information about you, they can't sell it or give it away or that kind of thing. And there's a school in Skellefte, ah, municipality. <laughs> Skellefte, of course, is Swedish for horses jam. <laughs> and it's a lovely town. And they said the teachers were spending 17,000 hours a year on attendance. Mm. So they tried... Face recognition technology. So a computer knew what you looked like. And he knew when you were in class, what room you were in, and all the data and all that all went into a computer. And the computer would say, he's in school, he's not in school, the whole lot, right? And the Swedish Data Protection Agency said, you can't be doing that, you nosy arseholes. <laughs> right? <laughs> what are they doing with the data? Well... Well, did you ever see that film, Total Recall? No. Me neither. I heard it's shite. <laughs> <laughs> but Arnold Schwarzenegger plays this lad who realises all his memories were implanted into his head. And then he goes mad. He wrecks the place. Right? So, um, yeah, that could happen in Sweden too. Just, just saying. <laughs> okay. 
And a lot of people don't know this about Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but Arnold Schwarzenegger actually has two left hands. <laughs> that is why he's so good at fighting. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you block the left hand. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you think, whoa, another left hand. <laughs> Wrong with you. And before you know it, Arnie is jabbing you out. Oh God! Um, I met him once actually. Did you? Yeah, he's a cousin of Blondie Ivers. <laughs> but I don't think he is. Arnie, yeah, all them Blondie lads are half Swedish. Um, <laughs> or Arnold's Austrian. Yeah. Right, he's close enough. Bang Gary can you know. <laughs> <laughs> and rumor has it that Blondie is actually the only man <laughs> ever to defeat Arnold. In hand to hand combat. <laughs> fight fire with fire, by as, I, as I always say. That's a fight. So that is schools in Sweden getting in trouble for um, filming young lads' faces. Can't be doing it, right? <laughs> now, local news. Are you going on holiday? Yes, yes, yes. Are you, are you, listen, a spare seat on the plane has come available. Really? Yes, someone's dropped out, and there's a free holiday there for you if you can get the if you can get the permission slip from Carmel. You're, look, you're more than welcome to join us. Are you going? I'm going, yeah. I'll probably stay at home. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Irish no. Well, where are you going? Albufeira. Portugal. Portugal. All oh, right, I thought that was kind of No. Albufeira. <laughs> Albufeira in Portugal. Yeah. Well, a local lady, she, she went holiday recently. Susan de la Hunty got robbed. Go, go <laughs> She was out in Spain. In Portugal, same thing. Uh, it's all the one to me. I don't trust anyone south of Clamel. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> and she was on Facebook having a canary over it. Okay. Getting messages from all the local fake tan fannies going, Oh, <laughs> oh, are you okay? You can't say that. You say can't say that. Say what? Fake tan fannies. I've just said it now. You can't say it either. <laughs> and they're all onto her going, You okay, hon? Huh? There's nothing wrong with that woman. She said, she was on Facebook and she said, no sign of forced entry. And I'll tell you why. The Don. The Don De La Hunty is, <laughs> Don De La Hunty is the greatest chancer since Dickie Rock. I swear <laughs> to God. What, Dickie Rock? No, he's a fine singer. Don't get me wrong. He's a fine singer. But he had that song. Do you remember? I left my heart in San Francisco. But he didn't. He came back to Ireland alive and well. <laughs> You can't say that you're leaving essential body parts <laughs> in another country like it's a wallet or a set of car keys, Dickie. <laughs> so don't tell lies, Dickie. That's, that's all I'm saying, okay? But Don De La Hunty, that man, is no good. I'm telling you, that man, he would rob the milk out of your tape. <laughs> them them De La Hunties walk around the town like they're the cores. I seen a photo of the cores the other day, four of them in the band, no, one of them wearing a bra. Oh, yeah, don't baggy t-shirts on them. I couldn't get over the style at all. Yeah, it was just, maybe they just wanted to take the bra off and free relax. The, free yeah. the nip. Yeah, nothing wrong with not wearing a bra. Well, I thought this is Catholic Ireland we were living in. I, I, <laughs> you can take the woman out of draw, I suppose, huh? <laughs> but you probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so Susan's on Facebook. Oh, we got robbed. Money's gone from the hotel, and you know when she got back, and you know who took the money. Yeah, the Don. What's this? Spilt milk. I'm telling you that now. She's going around abusing all the Spanish guards. And the Don, he'd rob the eye out of a bird flying. That <laughs> man, right? He's the man you want to deal with them fellas trying to sell you stuff on the street. The, the lucky men, as we call them. Yeah, yeah. Because they have met their match in the Don De La Hunty. I'll tell you that now. Fight fire with fire. He would rob the knickers off and on, that man. <laughs> and Susan's blaming them. And I'll tell you where the money is now. Don took it, went down to town, and he's after laving the children's allowance up on some Moroccan woman's back. I'll oh, tell you that now. No hole. That is where the Don is at. Oh. He's a bad man. That's, that's bad. <laughs> is it? You're bad. Well, I don't think he wouldn't do it. He would rob, he'd pick the pocket of an otter. <laughs> and that woman should carry a ladder all the looking down on people she does. Oh. He'd rob the sleep out of your eye, that man. I'm telling you. He's good on a crack though, I like him. 
<laughs> so, um, <laughs> that was the, that's the turnaround. Ah, he's good for an old yarn. Yeah. You know? But um, mind yourself on holiday. Yeah, we will. We and will. fight fire with fire. The <laughs> invitation is still open anyway for you to come. Mm. I highly doubt it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll check Just in. a word of warning to the people um, taking my advice in the Amazon. Probably not the time to fight fire with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Tis the drop of rain you want. So um, God bless to uh, Larry Quinn and all the lads <laughs> in the Amazon doing their own little bit. Um, we're going to have a collection at the early mass next Sunday and um, cash only please that the Larry Quinn Amazon fund is now operational. I don't, I don't think he's in the Amazon. Larry Quinn, yeah. Yeah. He's gone. I thought it was the Amazon. He's gone now, yeah. Or is it Arizona? <laughs> he's gone out foreign anyway. Okay. And he's going doing his own little bit for the environment. So. And you're collecting a few pounds. Myself and Dermot will be <laughs> at the um, the graveyard side of the church next Sunday. Go on. You mad joke. Good luck. See ya. <laughs>